Hello, good people, and welcome to the Amateur Hour. My name is Justin. My name's Tyler. I'm the one called Junior. And today's podcast is sponsored by EBXYA and Adam Stone. So, uh, Tyler, uh, you got a problem? I have a problem? <laughs> I'm, I'm going to call it a gambling problem. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. So, rolling back to all this conversation we had about the new Xbox and the new PlayStation and all that kind of stuff. Well, Taco Bell is offering the chance to win the Xbox Series X. So, I went to Taco Bell and I bought a box and, you know, got a regular meal. Went out in the parking lot and just sat there and ate it. And then I'm thinking in my head... I wonder if I tell this guy I'll give him five bucks if he'll give me a bunch of cups because the cup has the code on it, right? So I'm thinking in my head, he's going to say no. That would probably get him fired if someone found out. But I pull back around and I'm like, hey, bro, can I get if I give you like five bucks, can you give me like 20 cups? Just empty cups, just a stack of cups. And he looks at me with this confused-ass look, and he's like, uh, sure. And he turns around and walks away for a minute, comes back with a stack of cups, and just hands it through the drive-thru window. I'm like, sick! (laughs) There's your five bucks. So yeah, the the gambling problem has started, because it it got to that point where I went to Taco Bell and haggled this guy for some extra cups (laughs) in exchange for money. (laughs) That so, may or may not win me anything. <laughs> so you you're getting into this cup mentality. So is it it's a cup has a code on it. You text it to a certain number and then it tells you if you won or lost. So far you can only send in 3 codes a day. So I've okay. sent in like 6 or 8 or something like that and I've lost every one of them. But I have like 15 more cups. <laughs> Well, isn't that freaking weird, Tyler? <laughs> what What is wrong with you? But, but, but hey, if I win, I only paid, let's say, 10 bucks for an Xbox because one cup came with the $5 box. And then a whole bunch of other cups came when I offered the guy 5 bucks to give me a bunch of cups. <laughs> but technically, if you think about it this way, you've been posting... Or you've been buying these cups continuously, and it's like five over five. And I mean, no, no, this is recent. Like I bought one box, and it came with one cup. And then I circled back around with this idea and gave the guy five dollars, and he gave me a handful of cups. So I'm only ten dollars in. So have you won yet? That's not to say it won't stop, but <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but I'm ten dollars in right now. <laughs> It it's only starts with one, so uh, so in regards to all these twenty cups, have you won anything? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> well, so, I've only submitted. You can only submit three a day. It's only been a few days, so I think I'm like, I'm, I might be nine in. I might be nine cups in. So nine codes. <laughs> you have a sorting process for it like let's say okay you 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 put in these nine cups are you throwing them out reusing them or are you confusing yourself and uh not throwing the cups out no if you use the same code twice it tells you it's invalid oh okay that's good <laughs> i was gonna but say I like uh of, i have a stack of cups that's all together and then the floor of my work van just collects them until oh, Friday when I clean out my van. Oh, for the so love. So Friday comes along, I clean all the garbage out that piled up for a week, and then it restarts. <laughs> so, you know what? Let's talk about this uh, garbage at the bottom of your trunk or your car. Um, why do people use their car as garbage cans? Well, for me, I work... I spend very little time in the van. Well, it depends on how long I'm driving. If I'm driving for a while, then I'm in the van for a long time. But when I'm getting in and out of the van, there's 
not a garbage accessible and I don't have time to sit there and clean it between jobs because once you finish one, you have to rush to the next. That's just it. So that's why I just deemed it every Friday when I come home from work, I stop by the dumpster on the way in, I open up my door, I throw out all my garbage, and then I'm good for another week. But but that's basically it because I don't have time to sit there and clean it every time. Yeah, like I can't help. And especially now, like before, I would park, go inside of a place, sit down and eat, and throw my garbage out before I left. Where now I'm not doing that because of the whole COVID BS. So I'm eating in my truck, and then I usually have like a bag or something that I put my garbage in, and that just unfortunately has to sit there in my truck until I find somewhere to throw it out. So that's also adding to the problem right there. So there's a bag uh, in relation to this whole car situation of leaving the the rest of the garbage, essentially. Yeah, it all goes... It, it, it either just gets set on my floor, on the passenger floor, or it goes into a bag if I happen to have a big enough ga- bag to use for garbage. <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> now, if it's like if it's like leftover food or something that goes bad, that gets thrown away like immediately. But if it's just like a cardboard box or like an empty cup, then I leave that until I have time to clean it. I'm not I'm not going to be gross. I'm not going to leave a half eaten taco on my floor for four days. That would be disgusting. (laughs) <laughs> yeah no it's just i i mean i've seen people like uh i don't know if you've ever gone to a store and then you're walking in the parking lot you know just minding your own business and then all of a sudden you look to your right you see this car literally filled to the brim in the back of the car in yeah, the all seats the time. of the car like mm-hmm. it literally is space for the driver in the car that's it yeah that's it, and it's just garbage I've seen the rest like of the like way. That too. I've I've gone to houses like that and incompleted jobs because I couldn't function in that house. So yeah, I've I've seen all of that stuff. <laughs> it gets pretty bad. Yeah, mine so, is nowhere near. <laughs> it's just like uh, it's it's pretty insane to see see cars get like that, and I think of what are people thinking about uh, like collecting all this stuff? Are they considered hoarders? Are they just, do they like the smell of garbage? I, I, I don't know. I don't know if I would consider him a hoarder because I don't think you would want to save garbage for any kind of value. I could be wrong. I would have to say just pure laziness and you just don't care. Like just th- toss it over your shoulder and move on. When I think about it, I, I kind of cringe uh, to the idea of just piled up garbage in my car like what when i think of even just like having like one cup it just i I don't know how you don't go ballistic of just having it sit in your car well see that's the thing if it's empty it's not gonna spill and make a mess or stink i'm okay with it i can take care of it later but like okay if i didn't finish my food or maybe I had to rush and I had to stop eating. So now I have like this half eaten meal. I take care of that like as soon as I can, because that's going to start to smell and it's going to bring bugs. And it's like, nah, I can't do that. Nope. But if it's just the empty cardboard box or if it's the empty food bag, I just kind of take it and fold it back up and then fold it in half or something. And then I let it lay there. So then, because that's just paper or just cardboard or something like that. That's not going to make an issue. But if it's something that's like, like I said, a half-eaten meal or or maybe for some reason that bag was like greasy or gross, then then I, th- I throw that stuff away like as soon as I get a chance to. But otherwise, if it's just your regular recyclable garbage, I guess you say paper product or plastic or stuff like that, like empty water bottles. That I just take care of at the end of the week. So back to this gambling, because I'm starting to ponder here. When does it stop? When does like the the uh, drawings stop? Like for the Xbox that you're saying, and it's for a Series X, right? Not a 
Xbox. Uh... Oh, it's for the it's for the new one. Okay, and um, not the X. It's the it's the X, the expensive one. How 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 long is this uh, taking? Is it for the month? Is it for two months? I have no idea. So then, essentially, you'll be buying five dollar taco boxes until they say, "Hey, you know what? We're done with this uh, <laughs> with this giveaway." Well, see, that was part of the reason that I've offered a guy like, "Hey, five bucks, and you give me a stack of cups." Because I usually like to pick something else like Subway or Jimmy John's because it's healthier. So if the guy gave me a bunch of cups, I don't have to keep on coming back to Taco Bell. (laughs) But if he didn't give me a bunch of cups, then it'd probably be a downward spiral of making it back and forth to Taco Bell for lunch each day just to have the opportunity to get the code. And then that's probably not going to be a good outcome for me because who knows how long this lasts. And I probably will do it until I win or the or they stop the whole thing with winning the Xbox One. Definitely is a problem. Yeah, yeah. You got you heard it here. <laughs> but hey, um, think about it. That's like a six hundred dollar um, system. I'm only ten bucks in right now. If one of those cups wins, that's an Xbox Series X for ten bucks. With that said, though, like, who essentially gives 20 cups away for only $5? I think I would have been like, make it 10. And then I would have decided to risk my job, or maybe even 20 bucks. I don't know. I pulled up to the window. I was totally expecting this guy to say no. I pull up to the window. I'm like, hey, bro, I was just in a drive-thru. I bought a box. But I I I got to thinking. I'm like, hey, if I give you like five bucks i didn't tell him a number of cups i was was just like if i give you five bucks you give me a handful of cups and he's just he looks at me with this weird confused look and he's like why would i you know just like confused and then he's like yeah sure and he turns around and comes back and i don't even know how many cups i said 20 because it's i mean it's a stack like there's a bunch of cups in the stack and he just hands it through the window i'm like Shit, all right. I didn't think that was going to happen. I reached in my pocket, I pulled my wallet, I gave him a $5 bill and left. (laughs) Holy mackerel, Tyler. (laughs) (laughs) With okay, okay, and here's another question that I have is who was working with this guy? Was there like three other people, one person? Was he the cook, the cashier guy? It was just a guy at the drive thru window. Yeah, but like, like who else was working there, like, inside their there? Jobs, but this was just a guy at the drive-thru window. He his job is to hand you your food and drink. And it so, was it was one of the Taco Bells that have two windows where the first one takes your money and then the second one gives you your food. Wow, so then there there's like at least like would you say like five people in the building, six people? I mean, maybe. So my point I, being is that you heard stuff this going dude on. They were doing stuff in there. How many people are in there? I don't know, but I'm assuming it was more than two people. If this employee decided to give you these cups, who essentially seen him? Did anyone see him? And is he now fired for $5? <laughs> see, I was thinking about that too. Cause I'm like, there's no way he's going to give me these cups. This is probably something that he could get fired for. I probably shouldn't even ask. But then I got up to the assumption that the guy's just going to say no because he probably has the same thought process. Like, no, I can get fired. I'm not giving you these cups. Get out of here. <laughs> but then I asked him anyway just to, like, see the outcome. And he's just, like, totally agreed. So I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to accept these cups. <laughs> so now you, you have a guy who <laughs> who risked his job. Okay, like I wouldn't necessarily. I'm. I'm sorry. I'm processing this whole situation in my brain, <laughs> and uh, part of it, I was thinking, like, why would he risk it for five dollars? <laughs> I know that's like I. I was expecting either just a straight up no, get out of here, or like, bro, give me more than five bucks. And then, and then I think if, or, if he gets he's fired, just like, yeah, I'll do that. That's cool. They're just, they're just cups. <laughs> and I think of like if he gets fired, like who's to blame here? I I don't want to say you're the blame if he does because essentially he decided on his own 
to go over and try and give you these cups. He could have easily have said, nah, I don't really need the five dollars. Like, go ahead. No, he's like, well, yes. He's, the I the want drink the machine five bucks. and everything was right next to him, like right by the window. So literally all he did was turn around and grab a stack and give it to me. Here's another question I have. Did this guy you then in return use the money for uh how do you say a uh, Taco Bell? <laughs> Like, I mean, you think I he bought him, his lunch, lunch with that money? If that's what I would do if I were him. <laughs> I know he didn't put that shit in the gas register. <laughs> I, it, it, that kind of reminds me, and it, it gives me, like, this... Uh, it, it takes me back places. So we're at Kohl's, where I used to work, and I could probably say that, I mean, it's been a couple years since I've worked there. <laughs> so I, I used to work at Kohl's. I was an associate, right? And uh, I worked for this department. It was like home department. Now, a lot of the time, we would help people take stuff to their cars. Um, sometimes, like I even worked in shoe department. I helped people like try on their shoes if they're older. And a lot of the times we're told, if you're given tips, you can't accept it. One day, right, I had $0 in my bank account because, you know, life. <laughs> I was like, I didn't know what I was going to do for lunch. I was I was hungry. I was working. It was a super early work day, and I think I was working like an all-day shift. Super hungry. Anyway, I helped this lady find some shoes, and she decides to give me, I think it was like roughly like 10 bucks for a tip. And I kept telling her no, but I took it. <laughs> Like, she told me she wouldn't leave unless I took that tip. And uh, luckily, thanks to her, I mean, hey, I had my lunch and dinner for the day because I had, like, zero bucks in my account. I, when I think of that, um, something like it that, worth I don't it? Think it's bad. <laughs> like, you, that, that kind of thing, if you, you know, the people that bag your groceries and they take them out your car for you. I don't know if they're supposed to accept tips or not, but I'm probably not supposed to, or they probably tell them not. No, they. To. I think they are allowed to. But, but any, any, anyway, a, a job like that, if someone catches you accepting a tip, I don't think it's going to be a negative outcome. Now, the guy with the cups at Taco Bell, the reason I was thinking that he was going to say no, and the reason I was thinking that he could probably get fired was because these cups are a promotion that Taco Bell put out to bring people in. So each one of those cups brings Taco Bell how much extra profit because everyone's trying to come in and win the Xbox rather well, than just a regular. Because, you know, when they're not doing a promotion, they probably get less business because they're not offering anything. It's just a food. Well, now they're offering food and a chance to win an expensive item. So him giving me those cups just probably tanked the profit for that store for that day of the store. Yeah, I mean, not only that, I think aside from promotional stuff, I, I'm pretty sure you're not even allowed to, like, give cups and obviously, like, free food and stuff like that away for, in general. I mean, like, even, I mean, these companies, like, throw away food like crazy rather than, like, donating or whatever. You know, I, I think essentially you still could get fired if it's just cups, you know. So I think regardless, he could get in trouble from that uh, either way. Now, when it came to, like, the tips for my job, like, because then I accepted another tip because I helped this uh, elderly woman. Uh, she was having a rough time. She bought a vacuum and actually a few other things that were kind of heavy. And I helped her shop. And then from there, I walked her all the way to her car, put everything in her car for her, and sent her on her way. But she also gave me a tip. I think it was like 10, 20 bucks. I, can, I got some high $20 tips for, I feel like, minimalistic work. Like, it wasn't a big deal to me. But I'll take it, you know. But it's sad because, I, I mean, it sucks, you know. I wasn't supposed to take it. Coles, I quit, so, uh, you know... What does it matter? <laughs> I left there a long time ago. Oh, yeah. this So this guy, right? 
accepting tips he's fired we did i did briefly mention something that kind of interests me is the idea of giving away food like i know a lot of people get upset at companies for being wasteful and throwing out food uh, mm. by certain periods of date but sometimes it's like when I think of like giving to, let's say, a homeless shelter or a, a, what do you call a food pantry, essentially, why would you give old food items to, you know, food pantries? Like, like let's say, and I'm not talking about like canned well, goods, right? Because canned a goods of, last a, a lot long of foods time. In a lot of places, they have an expiration date and they have a use by date where. They might want you to use this food up by this date, but the expiration date might be another week out. So maybe that food is fresher if you use it by this date. But if it's still good for another week, maybe this soup kitchen or whatever, they can use it up before that time and it was still good food. So if you can't use it and you're supposed to throw it away because the use by date was up or it was really close, but the expiration date wasn't, then why not take that food and give it to someone who needs it? Um, my mom, they actually used to do that at the schools, but they don't they don't do it anymore. Um, where she always brought home like bags of mini corn dogs and bags of chicken nuggets or you remember the little milk cartons the little chocolate milks yeah she would bring a shit ton of those home because you know a kid would eat their lunch and maybe they didn't even open their milk so they put the milk back on the counter instead of throwing it away my mom would bring all those home or if there was however many in the freezer and they were going to expire in a few days or, 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 or the use by date or something was up. That would be the bags of um, mini corn dogs or the other milks that they had to get rid of because it was too close to the date to serve. My mom would bring all that stuff home. Honestly, when I think of, uh, I mean, that gives me now, an idea when it comes to food pantries. It hazardous. That gives me an idea when it comes to food pantries and um, how or how like these companies deal with their leftovers. I kind of wish that um, they would give their food. So like, let's say we're at McDonald's, right? And their well, use by date are, is like today that. and their uh, expiration date is like next week. I think it would be nice of them to say, hey, do you, any of these workers want to take this home? Like, let's say some buns or some uh, burger meat or whatever. And um, they have that sort of expiration date like a week later. If they're not going to give to food pantries, why don't they try and give to their employees there and maybe help them out? I mean, because if you think about it, what like if you're working at McDonald's, you're making maybe like the max ten dollars but i'm assuming it's like seven to nine dollars so i think obviously those people are going to be a little bit you know a little bit not having as much cash if you will um for food and probably other stuff because i i mean minimum wage barely gives you anything so I think that would be a cool alternative for like a mcdonald's or a taco bell or any of these like sort of fast food chains to sort of get rid of their food in that way. That's a, well, a most way. fast food places I know of, um, they do offer the employees like a free lunch or something while they're working or it's heavily discounted lunch. So at least while they're working, they do offer them some type of free or cheap food. But, um, there's a couple places that I learned about, like when there gets food that's near that point where it's close to expiring or it's or it's at the use by date, um, they repackage it and a truck comes back and picks all that up and takes it to a distribution center. And that distribution center takes it to different places that like soup kitchens or, or stuff like that. Not everyone does that, but that does happen. Um, as far as letting employees take food home, when I worked at Casey's, 
we would do that once in a while, but it didn't happen very often. And it was most of the time while you were there working, if you made a pizza, like I every day I worked, if I was working a 3 to 11 shift around 7 o'clock at night, I would make a pizza and I'd cut it up and I'd lay it on the back counter and tell everyone, hey, come get dinner. So that was just one of the things that I did while I was working there. Um, but uh, people taking food home, it happened once in a while. But like I said, it's it was kind of rare. But we also fed them while they were working there. So maybe that's the trade-off. Maybe that's where it was kind of like the same thing. Yeah, like their way essentially of giving back. I just know that it was like a, a big issue. Like I, I, I mean, you hear all the time people, uh, not all the time essentially, but I hear I've heard it in quite frequency throughout my life to an extent where people were like, you know, how these places they're being so wasteful. They're throwing this out. They're throwing that out. But um, like. I don't know. I I, th- I think uh, if they can find that sort of quick alternative, I, that would be nice. Um, like you're saying, some companies do. I hope kind of all companies uh, ad- adopt that because I think that's uh, very important to sort of give back. And I think it looks better on the company to be willing to give back, essentially. I know it's sort of profit lost, but it's like you're throwing it away anyway, so why yeah, don't you just give it? Lost, cause you pay for garbage pickup, and you are throwing stuff away. Exactly. So, so it, it's if still a loss. To come and pick up that food and do a positive thing with that food, most of those companies don't charge. They take that. That's that's usually like a nonprofit kind of thing. Maybe they do charge the company giving the food some amount of money to have a truck come out and pick it up. But like you were just saying, if you have something like that under your belt, chances are that's going to be looked at more of a positive way. Or like, for example, uh, I remember way back when, I mean, maybe this was like three, four years ago, seeing where GameStop, what they did with the games that they didn't sell, they would literally take a box cutter and they were forced to cut the disc and then throw it out rather than uh, uh, send it to, let's say, uh, maybe like a Goodwill or something like that where they could sell it for a cheaper price. No, GameStop would cut their disc or like they would break the controllers and throw them out. Uh, so essentially people can't reuse them and they wouldn't get like a free product. And I think that's kind of stupid. <laughs> I remember yeah. when that video came out and I thought that was absolutely insane. I'm like, why not give it to a goodwill or something like that? So people less fortunate can accept these things. Right. I think or, uh, or, or GameStop. Ahead. I've went to GameStop when I got rid of my Xbox 360. I was getting ready to go buy the xbox one i'm like you know what i'm gonna go to gamestop i have all these games i have the xbox 360 it was that special edition one that's one of the gears editions um and it had the big hard drive i went to gamestop they offered me shit for it and then i seen other pre-owned xboxes on the shelf that were like 50 bucks or 75 bucks cheaper than the brand new one so it's like Damn, you guys suck. You know, it's I think it's just that company. They're only in it to make money where that's why I think places like that are dying because you go to like disc replay. They actually give you decent value for your stuff. And then you go back in or you want to buy something secondhand. They actually have a good price on it. Where GameStop, they're just like, let's rip you off as hard as we can. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, GameStop is, they're becoming obsolete really quick. And I then remember, now that I know that they just kind of like cut things up just to make them deliberately not usable, just because they didn't sell it, that right there tells you what kind of company it is. They just don't care. They don't, they, they want the money. They're not going to do anything else to give that product away. That That's just it. They're only yeah. in it for the money. If you're a company that's only in it for the money, you're going to fail. Period. End of story. I think if I could find the video and you're on YouTube, 
check in the link in the description. Um, I'll probably post it there, that video, so you guys can see it. It was an older video. And it is quite upsetting to, to see that, essentially. Um, and, yeah, I, uh, GameStop is so obsolete. They're so away from their customer bases like with what the customer wants they're they're not there mm -hmm. and um and it's like when you go to trade something in they offer you pennies on the dollar compared to what that item's worth oh yeah i, I went on i after they gave me their like i don't remember the numbers but it was just a pathetic offer i went and listed my stuff on ebay and actually got probably three times more for it that's I just insane. put it up for bid, and everyone bid on it, and one guy won the bid, and he took it home. You, you go to trade in a game, depending on the game, let, let's say it's a brand new game, just came out. Maybe you played it once. It ran the disc in your console one time, and then you go back and you want to trade it in. We're talking about a $60 game. They might give you 10 or 15 bucks. That's crap. <laughs> but oh, yeah. why don't they just discount that game until it sells? Because if I walked in that store and let's say I traded that game in and they gave me 10 bucks for it, why not put it back on the shelf for 15 bucks? Like, yeah, that's not that much profit. But if you did that, think of the amount of people that would be going into that store to buy stuff like that. And right there, that's just a quick five bucks turned that they didn't do nothing for but just put it on the shelf and that's why gamestop is dying that's why they're failing <laughs> to be honest i can't wait plus i mean we're heading into this they sort of put digital it back on the shelf for like 45 bucks or 50 yeah. bucks and, and, and plus we're, we're heading into this digital world where um you know games are honestly you get better deals on like uh oh, I don't, steam I don't buy on xbox anymore. and so i, I I'm, I I'm do kind not of... buy disc. Everything's online off of Steam or the Xbox or the Microsoft store. And I don't buy games for full price. A brand new game will come out and I'll wait for the promotion to get people to come and buy it and say it's a $60 game. I might pay 40 bucks for it because I waited for the promotion and I didn't just buy it right away. So, yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of over discs. Um, essentially like it's it, uh, i'm over it. it i like i used cool to, i like it for the collection, collection. Cool idea the but physical piece but man it's like after the, the price is everything's too crazy about it now if a special edition comes out and you get to buy that case where it comes in the aluminum case and you usually get like the like a couple of different things with it like little desk stand figures or anything like that those things are kind of cool but you have to pay 120 bucks for that. Whereas if you go on Steam and you paid 120 bucks for something, you probably got the new game that just came out, all of the DLCs, and you probably got two or three of the older games with it. Like I was looking at the new Gears game. Um, I can buy the Gears game all the DLC and then um, the, the prior games before like three, two, whatever, they all came for that price. Whereas if you go to the GameStop and you buy the special edition game, you just get the game and a couple of decorations. <laughs> Is yeah. it worth it? But with that said, we're going to cut it to a quick break. Uh, stay tuned with us, guys, because we got a lot of interesting topics when it comes to the gaming world. A lot of new developments. So uh, stay tuned and enjoy this word from our sponsors. Adam Stone, a unique and talented artist hitting the alternative rock scene. Listen to him as he jams his way into becoming a new hit artist. Listen to Adam Stone singles for free on Spotify, SoundCloud, and YouTube. 
every day. You can follow your favorite ghost, Adam Stone, on Instagram and Facebook. Link in the description. And we're back from, I guess, I hope you guys enjoyed that word from our sponsors. Uh, again, I want to briefly mention, if you're on listening on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button and that notification bell. So that way, every Friday when we're posting at 9 a.m., you're the first to know. And you can listen to it, you know, throughout the weekend. It's up to you. You know, there's no rush. <laughs> but still, there's a rush. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, but if you're over on Spotify, SoundCloud, and even iTunes, I know there's a little follow there. So click that as well. Uh, I'm not quite sure how the notifications work, to be honest. Uh, I'm subscribed to our Spotify. I haven't got notified. So, you know, if you're not going to get those notifications, then come on over to our Instagram and Twitter where we uh, update you guys every time we're posting and or having delays. We had a delay kind of recent-ishly with one of our episodes, but uh, we're fairly busy and editing takes some time. That's all we got to say. Trying to put out the best podcast for you. So if there's any technical difficulties, we do do apologize so if we're talking over we're still getting used to it all right the discord it's strange i know it sounds like we're in the studio but we're not here still social distancing still being safe but uh yeah so there's been a lot of news recently uh you know we with we we talked about gaming all last episode it was our gaming galore episode talked about new games you wanted to buy we talked about all the recent news and we got some more gaming news and some pretty big news first things first xbox pre-orders i know we we're talking about xbox and ps5 what's better what's not who's the heavyweight champion and uh to be honest they're both relatively the same except the the lighter versions of it the digital versions only xbox was a little bit less on the specs compared to ps5 but you're getting a cheaper cheaper brand with that said though xbox pre-orders almost matched as high as ps5 pre-orders and uh that's awesome i mean that's good to hear that it's not just playstation taking this overall crown and uh, another thing that's pretty funny, Tyler, actually, uh, everyone ordering the Xbox Series X, there was like maybe half their orders or a couple of orders, a, a recent spike in their sales for Xbox One X because <laughs> everyone got confused because of the name. They, they didn't know what was happening. So you literally had a random spike in Xbox One X purchases because people oh. thought that that was the Series X. They're going to be so disappointed. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to come in the mail and they're going to be like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Why doesn't Xbox change the name? I, I don't know. I mean, listen, Xbox One is a solid name, but Xbox One X and then Xbox Series X... Uh, the only difference I, I is hand it the PlayStation right there, PS One, PS Two, PS Three, PS Four, PS Five. <laughs> you can't fuck it up. It's as Xbox, simple as Xbox. On the other hand, it. though, we have the Xbox, the Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, the Xbox One. Okay, so now we have two Xboxes that can be mixed up for the Xbox One. <laughs> And then we had Xbox One S, One X, blah, 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 blah. And yeah. now we have Xbox X. <laughs> yes. Yeah, or seri Xbox Series X. X. Yeah. <laughs> you got to add <laughs> so the series so in it. <laughs> it's so confusing. I, I, why not just... I kind of wish it was Xbox One. And then I thought they were going to do like Xbox Two, Xbox. You know, I was just like, All right, I, could, I could work with that. Like, that's fine. That's simple. Well, I, I think they just didn't want to be the same as PlayStation. <laughs> I, they, they needed a cooler name <laughs> i guess so you know and with the cooler name uh they also got 
you know, Microsoft, they're, they're like, you know, we got the cool name, apparently. We got the Series X. They're, they're pulling an Apple maneuver. Like, you know how Apple was getting weird with the the Apple X? <laughs> and then now they're like, oh, yeah, Apple 12. You're like, wait, 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 what the freak is going on? Anyway, besides <laughs> them being cool with their name, they decided to be cool and scoop up Bethesda Studios. And uh, that was really huge of Xbox to do. I don't know if you've heard about it, Tyler. Have you, have you, what, what, have you heard of it? What's going I, on? I have heard that that happened, but I did not look into it. I don't know much about it. But strain off a little bit here. I'm waiting to see if they come out with another Elite Edition controller. I haven't heard anything about the Xbox Elite 3. Yeah, neither have I. Uh, I was expecting to... the third one to come out with the new consoles. Yeah, so uh, as for the, the controller, yeah, they, they haven't released any one yet. I don't know if you noticed, though, with the Elite 2 controller, it uh, connects via USB-C now. And that's what yeah. all the new Xbox controllers are actually going to take, which is amazing. Because who has micro USB anymore? No one. It's like... It, it it fumbles. It's not as uh, easy to put in your device as opposed to USB C. Um, so I'm excited for that because I have USB C chargers up the yin yang. Um, but with that said, yeah, no, there 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 hasn't been any sort of release yet, and I think the reason being it's is probably because... going to come later in the year because I want to say the Xbox Elite Series Two controller came later after the major console launch true i think it's the the specs to are relatively uh how do you say similar maybe so maybe they don't have an idea of how they're gonna make this new controller like with better specs yet um so it's okay you know series two is out it's still solid but i mean getting back on bethesda studios here i just want to get your hot take if you will on the idea of uh do you think that they're gonna try and go this route with exclusive bethesda games now also with the purchase of bethesda games they bought another company or i think the company that was in it that bethesda owns or something like that is i, I believe like some sort of uh streaming company i i gotta look into it real quick yeah i don't i don't know a whole lot about uh what Bethesda? I don't even know if I'm pronouncing that right. Um, but I would assume that they are going to be coming out with an exclusive. It would make sense to, because now they have their hands on a whole new studio, uh, new people, new ideas. So here's an opportunity for everyone to get the new Xbox, and now they have this exclusive game that they can play. Yeah, so they they bought their actually publisher company Zenimax as well. So mm -hmm. um, apparently that company was trying to work with some new sort of streaming stuff, and this has to go with what we were talking about last episode about the new idea of Xbox games streaming and other games streaming. And apparently there's been rumor that they want to try and do something where you could stream Xbox games on your phone. Like I think that's that's cool. That's insane idea and push forth of literally what we were just talking about in uh, episode six, I believe. So I think that's yeah. crazy. I don't necessarily... Go ahead. I was going to say, they've been working on the Xbox uh, game streaming. It was actually a while ago. I remember watching some YouTube videos and stuff about them testing it out and playing with it. And it, it was kind of like the Google Stadia thing, but like you using your Xbox at home connected to the internet. But then if you're at your friend's house and you have your phone or the app or whatever, you can stream it. And I want to say uh, Steam does the same thing, which I've actually used Steam's version. And if you have a good solid internet connection, it works pretty well. Now, correct me if I'm wrong about how that works, but I think that's what they said it does, is it streams from your Xbox and then goes over. Being that they got these new consoles with all the extra horsepower, I would only expect something like that to work better. 
Yeah, I mean, this this opens up relatively a lot of points, too. Like, one point is, uh, I think, when, when they're purchasing this Bethesda, there is a possibility, right? They can make this an exclusive. Now, Doom, right, for example, becomes exclusive to Xbox only. Or uh, Fallout 70, whatever million, <laughs> will be exclusive to... Um, you know, Xbox One. But I don't think they would necessarily do that because that wouldn't be the smart move. Some people have been speculating that the idea of them purchasing, making this big purchase, is they're kind of trying to push PS5 into the idea that exclusives aren't necessarily the best thing to do because it's like they're, by purchasing this, they don't have the ability to, uh, let's say, they have this wide range of market, and they're making all this money from PS5 and Xbox and PC. So they have all these different avenues that they're making money from, which is a smarter move. And also, it's like kind of adding this uh, sort of pincer move where like PS5 is like all we have to our name is just exclusives. Is it really worth keeping exclusives for the PS5? So it's it's a smart move by Xbox. But I also think, and what actually what scares me about this, here's my other point, is that now by all these companies like Xbox, PS5, and all these places buying all these different studios, do you feel like this is like becoming this monopoly of video games? And do you think video games are going to become worse for it? Or are they going to become better because these companies... I mean, I, I want to say I hope for better because companies are all joining together. Every company that designs a game, they all have their different way of, you know, animation. They all have different things that they want to do differently. And they also have the different crowds of games. You know, like some companies, they do more first-person shooters. They focus on that. Other companies, they do more... Um, single player, maybe maybe co-op, stuff like that. When you get to the point where you want to start merging these companies together and they start sharing ideas for that fact of making a game that has input from all different areas now, I feel like that would allow for a more immersive game to be created, per se. Um, but as far as forming a monopoly, I mean, every company tries to do that. Every company tries to be the best out there to push everyone else out of competition so they can take everything and run. So I'm sure it's still going to lead to something like that um, or where you're going to see where they chose this makes us more money over this makes us a better product that happens with every company yeah but i i definitely see how it could in turn bring out better games and better experience for the consumers yeah i i agree with that statement i'm, I'm a bit 50 50 with it because my idea is that okay so it's like we have right like this ability to like wow like they could pump out so much better like games now like, mm -hmm. uh, I think one of Bethesda's issues with their multiplayer games is they didn't necessarily have a company that they were using, like, that had great servers that worked well with developing online gameplay. So, like, you right. have Elder Scrolls, and that one's been fairly uh, good. People enjoy it. People, It has a good following for an MMO. But when it comes to Fallout 76, right, you still got all these complaints. There's freaking crazy bugs some people were able to get in sort of the uh developer sections that they made and like there's some guns right there that they have in the map itself in the server itself where it was like there were test guns and stuff like that so it had like unlimited ammo and all this crazy stuff that they were finding i'm gonna call it like their developer boxes in the server so i thought that was funny but i think bethesda now having this parent company, Microsoft, is going to have this ability to be like, okay, well, now we can do a proper multiplayer game and cooperative experience. Hopefully, I, if right. they decide Microsoft, to make a Fallout. 
Right. Yeah, because Microsoft supplies, like you said, they supply the servers, they supply the um, software engineering background, all that stuff. Okay, you take the people that create the game, that do all the animation, that write the stories, that do all that, and now they're all saying, okay, well, we could make this awesome multiplayer game. We could make this really awesome open world huge thing, but we don't have the server support. We don't have the money. We don't have, you know, those big things. Microsoft steps in, you know they got server support. You know they got software support. And you know they have funding. And now that they're releasing these uh, new consoles, everyone doing the pre-orders, that funding's going up, 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 up. So, you know, I, I feel like that would make a very positive change to all of those aspects that you just mentioned. I I feel like that's the part where it's going to thrive when you're merging with a company like that. Yeah. And then where the other 50 comes into play <laughs> um, is I feel afraid that, you know, possibly I don't know how deep Microsoft gets its hands in, in sort of uh, certain things, but I really w am scared that Microsoft can, you know, push developers and say, we want this by this date. And then they just start pumping out stuff for an easy cash machine. And uh, then that's how you get bad video games like EA, for example. Right. That's all yeah. they do. They put their hands in every single studio, get their dirty little fingers in there, start pushing for money, and they ruin such crazily good games that could have that had so much potential. Like right. the biggest one, for example, was Mass Effect Andromeda. People got so disappointed by that game because it was rushed. Uh, Anthem was another one. The company Bioware was rushed by EA to develop this game. And it turned people off. Battlefront 2, Star Wars Battlefront 2. That game was another one that uh, people were disappointed with in the beginning because in the beginning EA had loot boxes and this crazy business model where they just wanted to milk you for all your money. So Yeah, that I can agree with because when you when you have the company that's really focused on a good immersive experience and they want to take their time to really produce a good product and then all of a sudden you got this other company that buys or partners with them and now that company says okay we have this deadline and here's all the things that we want in the game you have to let the developers have their part and they need to have control over certain things if they really want the product to be good if you if they if the wrong person takes control that's where you start having problems. That's that's where ideas don't get finished. That's where a good idea gets changed. And now maybe it was for the better, but sometimes it's for the worse. And that's that's where they're getting mixed up with a lot of the games that are happening. Let's say uh, Fallout 76. Um, I don't know that they merged with them, but that was a game where they had a deadline and they they had all these intentions and then they released the game, and it was a total letdown. That was supposed to be an amazing game. It's better now, but that game has also received like several near 20 gig updates. Had they just let that game keep on being developed and then released it the right way the first time, it wouldn't have had all those negative reviews, and it would have been a way better product. But things that you're talking about where it's rushed and certain things are getting traded around and tossed around and, no, we're going to do this instead of this, that's why that game came out to be a failure like it did. Yeah. So hey. definitely that stuff. It takes a, that, that takes a big part in the game development. It's definitely nice to see, though. I, I will have to say that Microsoft is, you know, eating up these companies like this because essentially – you have like you know ps5 right now they're you got insomniac studios and you got so many other studios that are really good for sony and um you know microsoft was kind of falling behind in that regard so i'm happy they scooped up some more ip uh that they can keep now and uh if they wanted to develop a exclusive i mean that would be cool 
And if they don't, honestly, I think I would support them too in that because hopefully I kind of want exclusives to disappear because I'm, I'm over it. I'm over PS5 always having a, a specific exclusive over Well, that's Xbox. one thing I've never liked because, okay, I'm a PC gamer. Eventually, most things make it to PC. But you have to wait. And then the question is, how long are you waiting? And then for all the people that just bought the brand new Xbox, and then all the people that just bought the brand new PlayStation, then they go to their buddy's house and they're playing this only Xbox game or this only PlayStation game, and then it's maybe they really, really like that game. Now they're like, well, damn, now do I have to go buy another console if I really want to play games like this? That's where you start to draw the line. It's like... I'm the same way. I, I wish you could, because the consoles, no matter what, they have not identical ha hardware, but they have close enough hardware to run each other's equipment and each other's games. So, and think about the profit margin for the developers, for the for the studios making those games. Yeah, it's a PlayStation-only game, but just think about how much more profit they would make off of that game if I could buy it and run it on my Xbox or on my computer. Agreed. It, would, it would make their profits bigger. At least I would feel like it would. It would make sense that it would. Yeah, the the more money they make, the, the you know, they, I, I agree. I feel like it's, it's the smartest business move to do is uh, go to all these different developers, you know, open, open their, their sales to multiple platforms. With my third point now, I feel that this is actually a, a proper way of Microsoft even being able to dive deeper into uh, cross-platform with the idea of ZeniMax and, and streaming how they want to do. I think now, and honestly, and it's kind of a question too, but I do feel, I mean, first I'll put up this question to you. Do you feel gaming consoles are essentially ready for seamless cross-platform. I, I do feel like we're headed in that direction. So I've been doing some research, and actually we have a couple of games that I recently bought. Um, they are working on cross-platform. But before, well, let's say currently right now, because it, it is, um, I got the original Xbox One. So that console is not fast enough to cross play with PC. It's probably fast enough to cross play with PS4, but the company's just they're in competition, so they don't want to do that. But now that these new consoles are coming out, now I will say when the computer hardware comes out like we just got the new 3080, the 3000 series for Nvidia they're coming out with processors that run... Well, well, we already have processors that run upwards of 5 gigahertz, where the console only runs about 3 gigahertz. So PC hardware is still superior, but it's getting to the point where that Xbox and that new PlayStation that they're re releasing now, it has high bandwidth memory, high bandwidth connection to the internet, really fast hardware inside it, that it could actually compete with a computer gamer. And more and more console games are coming with support to use a keyboard and mouse on your Xbox. So that's another thing they always say. If, you, if you're a computer gamer using your keyboard and mouse, you can move faster, you can do a lot more, you have a lot more buttons to press and program to have an advantage over anyone playing on a controller. So... We're getting to the point where we can really make the merge where the hardware from both sides is competitive enough to throw both people into the same server. And that was one of the reasons where you it was hard to have an Xbox play in the same server as a computer. Because hands down, let, let's say six years ago, five, six years ago, something like that, when I built my gaming computer... An equivalent console didn't exist. There, there was nothing. If an Xbox wanted to play in the same server as me on an online game, 
the Xbox was falling behind, dropping frames, really high input lag. It just couldn't do it to the point where it was unfair for that other person to play. Where now, with these new consoles, that's going to be completely irrelevant. Now it's going to be up to the decision, do the companies want to allow it? Because we know the hardware level is there. Now it's do the companies want to say, okay, console gamers, you can play with PC gamers. And then people that do all the counts or the PC game and they really focus on that. Now they're saying, okay, well, we're a PC only server, but now your consoles are fast enough to not cause us lag. You can play on our servers now. So now it's up to the people that are sitting on their high horse that control these um, companies that say, we don't want you on our servers or you cause too much lag or it's un it's unfair for us because you're faster than us. You can respond faster than us. That's that's disappearing. So I think it's really up to them actually making the decision to say, OK, we're ready to do it because that's why we haven't. There's no there's too much lag. Councils have higher input latency, all that stuff. And then they say it's unfair. But we're merging to the point where the, the hardware in that new Xbox is going to be neck and neck with your average computer hardware. Yeah. So I, I think we're ready for it. I mean, that's good to hear. I, I feel the same way. You know, I, I agree with that, that we are ready for more cross platform video games. I think my only issue recently that has been with cross-platform is that PC, like, uh, for example, when you play the game Warzone, there's so many ambots and hacking uh, techniques that they're using for the video game where they're shooting through walls, they can see through walls, because the you know PC players are able to download this code and uh, all these mods so easily, and console, right, they're locked out of it, they can't do that. So I think that's one disappointment that I have and, and fear towards multiplayer. But for the most part, I agree 100% that I, th I feel like we got the hardware. It's time for cross-platform to be a thing a lot more. Yeah, right. It brings there, the communities there, together. There's going to be software integration that has to be made. Because, okay, if, if you're an Xbox gamer and I'm a PC gamer, chances are that's going to be easier to make happen. Because Microsoft runs both of them. Now, if you're a PlayStation guy and you want to play with an Xbox person or you want to play with a PC person, I would assume that's going to take more on the software side because it's a completely different operating system and a completely different system altogether running on the PlayStation, where now it's Sony has to learn how to play nicely with Microsoft and Microsoft has to learn how to play nicely with Sony and their code has to work together without failing and without being glitchy. Is it possible? Yes, because we, I, there is games out there that do that now. Is it more complicated? Well, you're going to need a more experienced software engineer to answer that question for you. But I would assume Sony to Microsoft is a harder um, integration than Microsoft to Microsoft being an Xbox to a computer. It's, it's definitely there. It's very exciting to see. Like, like I said, I'm happy with this Bethesda Studios purchase, the Zenimax, that Microsoft did that because, I mean, we were ready. What one of the Microsoft exclusive games in the beginning was Astroneer, for example, and I know mm -hmm. we talk about that game quite a bit, but that opened up cross platform so tyler you can play on your pc and i play on my console and i think that's really cool and that's going to bring microsoft's community just together way more than what sony could do <laughs> and, you and know? it's also going to be great because okay when i first bought my xbox i had friends that had computer and i had friends that had xbox I couldn't play with my buddy on my computer. And then now I'm sitting there like, man, I want to build a gaming computer. But at the time, everyone that has a gaming computer, they are at least double the price of your console. That's just how it is. 
So it's not obtainable for everyone. But if we release cross platform and I can go spend 400 bucks on an Xbox and okay, now my, my rich friend in in whatever school or whatever, mommy and daddy bought him this brand new computer. That's balls to the wall. Awesome. Now we can play together because the council integration is to that point. So I, that we're ready for it. And that that's, those are going to be the perks. That's, that's what we need to look forward to. But like I said, the first decision that has to be made is the companies have to be able to agree with playing nicely to each other. And everyone knows it's money, money, money. So are, is there a profitable decision? If there's a profitable decision, they're going to do it. Yeah. If there's not a profitable decision, we're never going to be able to do it hands down. That's just how it is. That's that's what makes me so excited about this Microsoft thing is that Microsoft owns like uh, obviously Windows and they own <laughs> Xbox. So like at least those two communities are going to be able to link up just so seamlessly. It's going to be amazing. Um, but with that said, you know what? It was a good conversation. I think it's uh, we're at 30 minute mark again. Time for another break. And a word from our lovely sponsors, EBXYA. I often find myself wondering, what's next? What lies ahead? Where do I go? How far will I go? We often think about tomorrow. But what's the point? What's the point of not looking at what we have in front of us? Why not look to the present and be grateful? Why do you run from today? What difference does it make if everything you have today can be gone tomorrow? So I urge you, live for today. Search EBXYA on Amazon today to get all of your XLR cable needs. Link in the description. And welcome back from that sponsor... I hope you guys enjoyed that word from our sponsor, uh, EBXY. We love them. We love them. Again, new stuff coming pretty soon. We got some, got some toasty things hopefully in the works. Uh, but with that said, I hope you, you know, uh, I hope you guys' day is going fantastic, and I hope you're enjoying the episode. With that said, though, please leave comments. If you know, if you got some answers, some comments uh, based off the the subjects we talked about, maybe you, maybe you don't think Taco Bell should give away free food because it's super unhealthy. Maybe you got something else to say. Please fun fact. drop. Yeah, fun Taco fact. Bell. Taco Bell was recently discovered as one of the healthiest fast food chains. That's a bit crazy. I feel like it could be debatable. <laughs> it might not even be true, but I, that's, I've heard that from multiple people. Well, anyway, there you go. You you if you got, if you want to combat that, leave a comment below on YouTube. You know, and the reason why I'm singling out YouTube, listen, we, you can't comment on Spotify. You can in SoundCloud. So if you want to leave a comment on SoundCloud, please do. Uh, maybe we'll, we'll respond. All those people on Spotify can hit up the social media. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Go to the social media. Leave comments there based off of the stuff we talked about. Uh, feel free. We're on Instagram and Twitter. Just click the link tree. It's in the description, right? You're going to click description, click link tree, bada bing, bada boom. If you can't click the link tree on Spotify or iTunes, I'll tell you what. Go at the amateur hour <laughs> underscore on Instagram and on Twitter. Uh, I believe it's the same thing. So, you know what? Find us. You know our logo. Type it in. Look us up. Follow us on social media so you guys get all the updates. Every single bit of update. Uh, if we're being delayed, if we're canceling an episode, no matter what, you guys will be uh, caught in the loop. So, uh, come on over. Subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Okay, <laughs> into our topics. Recently, you know, I've been living life on the YouTubes for entertainment. Free entertainment, to be more specific. 
But uh, something I, I, I caught on, it's kind of been an uproar for a while, but streaming, live streaming, playing video games, watching movies, whatever it is, pe- a lot of people are live streaming now. And uh, why is this so popular, Tyler? What, you what's your take on it? Movies? Like, yeah. Are people streaming themselves watching a movie? Oh, yeah. They're, for a- example, okay. they were, uh, there's this... A uh, YouTuber by the name of Gassy Mexican. He he <laughs> runs with C Nanners and all the rest of the crew. If you guys know who they are, but um, he uh he was watching Star Trek in a live stream on Twitch. So I thought that was insane. And uh, they comment on it, you know, sending uh, subscribing to their com their monthly so that Nobody way they can copyright hits. Can't you hear um, the audio and everything? Here's the thing. I think with live streams, it's a bit different. Like the rules and regulations are different because um, essentially it's it's a live product, right? You're not necessarily recording it and then uploading it to monetize it, essentially. I don't know. I don't know how it works. That's, that's a theory. It's a theory. But uh, what's your take on these live streams, Tyler? Like how do you feel about them? I mean, I'm not going to watch you watch a movie. I'm going to go watch the movie. (laughs) So (laughs) that kind of live stream, I don't get it. But hey, whatever. To each their own. Um, But I do watch a couple of live streams once in a while of people playing like a video game and that kind of thing. So that I can get. I'm, I'm into that. Um, there's this other one, they call it blogging, where I don't know if it's technically, um, live stream. I I guess you could do it live, but you basically just record yourself doing your daily tasks or whatever you want to call it. So there's actually a couple of YouTubers that I watch that do that once in a while. So I, I guess I watch a little bit of that. Um, but I mean, that's probably about it we record our own podcasts and i really don't watch anyone else's podcast but yeah that's that's about it for me i, I watch some some live stream type of content not a lot but i do some of it's definitely more weird the whole tiktok thing i don't know if that falls into the con is that live no no that, that's more social media driven gotcha, cringe worthy stuff that <laughs> That's been exploding lately. Um, my cousin, he's on TikTok all the time. Every once in a while, he sends me something just hilarious. But I don't go on it myself and look things up. Yeah, TikTok is a, it's a crazy animal, I tell you that much. It's uh, very it much... All, whatever you want on there, I guess. It's one big, uh, one big thirst trap. <laughs> I feel like it's a thirst trap and and meme city as well. Uh, it's it's one of the two. You got like the pretty boys with the curly hair, right? Trying to look all pretty and like they they do the slow mo on the camera where they they pop in there and they're just like looking at the camera and they're all like buffed out and again they got the curly hair. I call them spaghetti heads. That's my nickname <laughs> for them. <laughs> like it's. Too cringy. I, I every time I see it, like on Instagram, like and it's from TikTok. I literally, I post I'm the puking emoji. Stuff. Yeah, I'm. I'm just not gonna do that stuff. I have no interest on in recording me doing something for thirty seconds and then posting it for the world to see. I don't understand the point. If oh. I were doing something absolutely amazing that not many people can do, and I, I guess just put it up for the bragging right or like dude, I just accomplished this, but I still don't think I would put it on TikTok. I don't know. I, I guess I, it's not my personality to, I'm, I'm not a social media person. So I guess maybe that's why I hate social media. Social media is not my thing. TikTok is a, uh, it's a cringe fest. So I, I don't blame you 100%, but back to live streaming. All right. TikTok. Ew. Right? I didn't know if that was live or not. I'm sure um, there's stuff on it. But back into the live stream, it's just been so popular recently. I've just been seeing it everywhere. I myself have started kind of watching 
uh, one live streamer. I'm not really too into live streaming too much, unfortunately. It's just, it's not my cup of tea. Um, I, I like more of, like, the quality, like, edits and stuff like that. But when it comes to it, uh, yeah, how do you, what do you think is, why is it so popular right now? Well, I mean, we got how many people from home, they're trying to find new things to do. I'm sure that's adding to the pool. Um, I got, like I said, I watch YouTubers do like blogging. I guess if you're streaming it, you're doing it live, but you're still doing the same thing. So maybe that's a new thing. People taking different approaches at stuff. But I would say it has to be because of the current situations in the world. More people are home more than they're away at work or doing their normal daily task. So I'm sure that's probably feeling a lot of it. Yeah, it's just been blowing up. Like, I like YouTube gaming, right? Like, I love... Well, I have a lot of YouTube gamers that I watch. But I, for some reason, it takes me out of the lure when I'm seeing a live stream. And I'm like, eh. There's one YouTube, one YouTuber that, that live streams that I absolutely love. And it's because it's definitely a total spectacle. It's a show, and and, and it's amazing. Is uh, Dr. Disrespect. He's a video gamer, and uh, he has, like, this... Just the quality of his streaming is absolutely amazing. And I'm not talking about, like, clear quality. I'm literally talking about, like, the, the show that he puts on is it's just insanely uh, amazing what he does and how it's all live. It's almost like uh, you're watching a TV show, and but it's free, and it's fantastic. But, w you know, with that said, it's just been weird, you know. It's been something I've been pondering of, like, man, like, this has been just all the rage now. I mean, you have people like Ninja and people like Dr. Disrespect and all these other crazy streamers or whatever uh, catching million-dollar deals just because they they stream video games live and they're good at it. Like, that's just... I find that nuts. Uh, for example, that Ninja that I keep mentioning, he, he has his own shoe brand, I believe, with Adidas. Hmm. Maybe we need to go live. <laughs> yeah, I, it, for podcasts, it's definitely uh, a bit of a, a dry tone, but hopefully someday we can go live when we're feeling ready. We're feeling organized. We're just I don't feeling know. I don't absolutely think positive. Any dry moments when we're in the studio. Obviously, right now we're not in the studio, but we'd probably get some pretty good laughs. Yeah, who knows? Hey, hey, hey possibilities, places we might go. And it, uh, talking on the subject of popularity, the recent game, and I know we briefly talked about it, but the game Among Us that has been just everywhere. And here's the thing that gets me. That game is a party game, but it's a 2D game in a world of crazy, you know, animated 3D, just insane games. Now you have like this regular flat 2D. Right. All of a sudden, here comes this game that it's... It looks like it's 15 years old. It pops in there and it's like super popular and everyone's playing it. I haven't had a chance to play it yet, but uh, obviously Justin plays. Uh, the girl from work plays. She wants me to join in. Um, my cousin plays. He wants me to join in. So I'm just like, you know what? I downloaded a free version on my tablet, but I think it's going to turn into me downloading like the legit game on the PC because it really sounds like I do need to get into this. Yes, yes, you do. And uh, hopefully tonight, Tyler will be taking his first little footsteps as an imposter on Among Us. It is a super fun game. I just, you know, given the factor that you got all these choices, you got Call of Duties and you got the halos and all the other games out there and people are choosing this 2d game to be this most extraordinary thing and the thing is too is that among us when it originally came out was in 2018 no one was paying attention to it but now 2020 it's it's just blew up they were scheduled for a second game and uh they canceled the release because of the popularity of the first one so this game's been out oh yeah 
Because I've never heard of it in the past. It's been out. It's been around the block. <laughs> wow. Okay. I didn't. Fun fact for me, I didn't know that. I thought it was someone's new thing that they just came out with, and all of a sudden it just hit. I did too. And then when I was going to purchase it, I, I looked up the uh, the publication. And it said 2018. I was like, for the love, this game has been out for two years. Or like three, <laughs> actually. And no one has seen it or like really stream crazily streamed it uh, like they are now. Part of its popularity, I believe, is because it's it's something new. It's a party game. And you have all these people, you know, like... It, it's like, well, everyone's uh, been sitting at home that's... You know, we can't go to a party, so why not log into an online party game kind of thing, you know? Yeah, that it could have to be part of the reason it exploded. And that's a scary thing. Do you feel like this game would die out? Uh, you know, it's a hit or miss question. Because some games, they get a fad going, everyone plays it, and then it wears out. And then other games, it's like Call of Duty. Every update of Call of Duty, if you ask me, is the same. Let's log in and kill each other as many times as we can. And for some reason, it doesn't get old. It's still a thing. I don't know. I think it. Uh, if they can keep it interesting and keep and people uh, keep getting involved, I don't think it'll die. It just depends on the crowd and everyone being staying interested. I think. I think you're right. I think you're right. Honestly. I hope that it, it does well because games like that, I mean, it's always nice and wholesome to see uh, 2D games uh, still relatively popular. And uh, I hope it's an increase for these party games. Uh, I enjoy them. I think they're really fun and exciting and new-ish. <laughs> it's like a board game, but uh, instead digitally. We'll call it new because it recently exploded, but obviously it's old. <laughs> Yeah. It's, it's, I thought it was a new game. I didn't know it came out two, three years ago. Yeah, I I had no clue about it either. Like, I wish I would have, right? And I wouldn't have been hopping on the bandwagon like everybody I'm else. Totally under the impression that this was a new thing. So, yeah, news to me. <laughs> yeah, so now what they're doing is they're refreshing the servers. They're adding... Uh, I believe new maps, and uh, they're can so they canceled that second game. They're not going to be dropping it, but uh, yeah, hopefully so they're available into, on more platforms. It's going to turn into GTA. Right. Everyone keeps on vamping it up, and they keep on making another DLC, and then they keep on updating. <laughs> yeah, and What's as long cool? as they make money, they are not going to cancel GTA Five. <laughs> So here, so here's a random unscheduled topic that no one put in the list or thought about. Let, let, GTA games like GTA. Well, I actually th I think GTA is the only one that gets so much DLC and so much uh, ongoing credit. But are you waiting for a six? I am waiting for a six. Cause... I've been waiting for a six for like three years. <laughs> See. <laughs> I, I had played the fifth one. It was super fun back in the, the 360 days. I enjoyed it. You know, it. I've been waiting. I want to. It, it sucks because you don't have a computer. Um, but I want to play the fifth one, the online co-op or whatever you want to call it. I want to play it again because I haven't legitly played the game for about two years. And there's been so much DLC I want to see what all this hype is about. Oh yeah, the the DLC is insane. Like you got Tron. There was like a Tron DLC, pretty much, where like you know the little like the Tron movie where they're like releasing like this light field off their bike, their light cycles, uh -huh. and you could do that in the game where you're trying to cut people off with that beam of light. It's just it's really cool what they what they're doing with the game, and I, I think that's one thing I loved about GTA. And, I think possibly one of the reasons why it's still alive is that I feel like they're one of the first like big mainstream games to hit uh, consoles and say, Hey, the DLC is free. It's free DLC. Like you don't have to pay See, for it. We're need, keeping we your need more together. games like GTA because GTA has PVP. It has awesome co-op and it has open world. Do whatever you want. 
join whatever mission you want. I think GTA is is a game out there right now that you can say is the only game that has so much variety of what you can do. I mean, is that a safe thing to say? Oh yeah, and, and they they hit one of the highest sales I think this past year. They literally people are even still buying more. it new. People are still going to the store to buy this game. They're still going online to buy this game. It was released how long ago? And every year, it's like they get a refresh, and everyone buys it like it's a brand new game. I don't know that there's any games out there that have that much credit right now. This game came out in 2013. I <laughs> how know. Is it, how is it still alive? <laughs> it's still one of the most popular games out there. Dude, that's like seven years of just nonstop GTA 5. Now, when did GTA 4 come out? GTA 4, let's see. I know GTA 4 wasn't nearly as big as GTA 5. GTA 5 is a... It was a massive launch. It's 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 a it's a game launched that's going to be in history books. Two thousand and eight. <laughs> that's how big it seems. GTA when? Four was uh, in two thousand and eight, April twenty ninth. Yeah, so I think we're due for a number six, huh? Yeah, <laughs> it's about time. I think seven years of one game is kind of enough. Like, so I like GTA. It's fun when you have friends. If you don't have friends, it's kind of It's boring. fun when you have friends because right now if I just log in to a public server, it's not fun. I get pissed off. I go on a killing spree. I murder as many people as I can, and then they log out. <laughs> now, when you have a group of friends to play with where you can actually like do the heists and all the missions like that, then it's awesome. Fun game. But they're still running the same old game engine, the same old graphics, the same old everything. That's why we need the uh, GTA 6. Here's the because... sad thing. I think it was confirmed. And sorry to cut you off, but I think it's confirmed that, <laughs> that they're going to do GTA 5 for the next generation of consoles. <laughs> well, I mean... I'm just like, Why? <laughs> They need to refresh it because you log into GTA. It's still a fun game, but we have way better graphics now, way better physics. Everything in that game is still the old game, you know? And here's the scary thing. Update. Here's the scary thing. Now that they've made such a fantastic game right? like GTA 5 that's lasted seven years now they have so much weight on their shoulders to make GTA 6 the best game alive. <laughs> or oh, I feel yeah. like if, if, if they if it if... has any problems or if it has like any negativity to it, they are gonna rip them a new asshole. That's just period <laughs> of the story. They're gonna be destroyed. <laughs> They, they are definitely that company will just Rockstar will disappear after that. <laughs> like, there's no way I believe they would be able to necessarily recover I, from a, a bad game now. I think they need to get rid of GTA 6, get rid of GTA 5, and just make GTA and update GTA, make a new game with new graphics, new game engines, new everything. Take everything GTA 5 had, put it in this GTA game, and then keep updating the game and just call it GTA. Yeah. Honestly, that, that might be like it's like almost like a big reboot, but like And then not. maybe once every two or three years do a map update or maybe add to the map. Yeah, can you imagine them expanding the map? Like that would be I crazy. Mean, Computer hardware and servers are so good now that we could have a massive open world game and GTA with all the different stuff you could put in it. I mean, could you imagine that game? That would be that would be awesome. A map three times the size of it is now filled with people causing havoc, doing whatever missions, just going on whatever killing spree or anything they want. I just imagine that game. That would be an awesome game. That would be, I would, if they released it tomorrow for 89 bucks for the base game, 
I'd go buy it because that's how much I like that game. Hey, I would I would pay an overpriced rate for that game, hands down. I, I mean, even have at least they did some sort of new game, right? They did the Red Dead Redemption 2. I haven't been on the multiplayer for that at all because I haven't had friends down to play it, right? Everyone's no. been in Warzone, but um, for the I most part, they're doing free Red DLC. Redemption 2 is the reason that GTA 6 didn't come out. I don't know if that's a true statement or not, but they put all their work ethics and all their um, everything into Red Dead Redemption 2, and they put GTA 6 on hold. That's th- the rumor. I think I so. I have no idea if it's true. And if it is true, honestly, that's fine, because Red Dead Redemption 2 was absolutely one of the best stories of a video game that I played. I enjoyed every minute of it. It felt like a Western. It was a Western just everything Was about that in it. The game recommendations last time. No, but it should have been. Because so... <laughs> I've been thinking about buying that game for a while, but I've just been hesitant. I don't know why. I just haven't really thought about liking that game. But everyone keeps saying Red Dead Redemption, awesome game, awesome game. Yeah. So I'm like, man, do I need to buy it? Yeah, but... get two and then pl- get one after that because it's uh, actually. Two is technically like a prequel to uh, Red Dead Redemption One, but you you'll oh, love so they every do minute go together. of it. Yeah, they do go together. It's just like technically it's like an opposite order. <laughs> well, hold on, I'm gonna. Oh, it's an op. So you want to play two first? Yeah, you want to play two first, and then you want to play one because it leads right into one right away. So you you'll understand what's going on between okay. um, Red Dead Redemption One and Two. It's exciting. It's it's good how they weave the stories together. One of the, like I said, one of the best stories I've played. I mean, just absolutely just overall fun, uh, emotional. Well, the second one is on sale 33% off. Hey. Hey. Um, Special edition, though. What's included in the special edition? Is it worth me paying the extra money for? Um... I would say maybe not. You, I mean, what, you get in like an extra horse, some other stuff. Maybe I don't know if you could really use them in multiplayer. I didn't really find myself using any. I think I had pre-ordered it, and uh, I didn't use any of the pre-order stuff that I had for it. So, hmm, okay. But is it a fun game? Yes. Are you gonna have a blast? Yes. Is it a lot is it of like gigabytes? GTA? Do they yes. keep on doing updates and making it awesome? Yes, they do. They did uh, another update recently. It was like uh, for hunting and stuff like that. These are, these are the games that are worth buying. And now can I co-op this game with people? Yes, you can. Why are we not making more games like these? <laughs> Rockstar, they're doing something right. <laughs> yeah, they, They've always been on point with their video games. To be honest. Well, for most of them. Because there's PvP in here. And there's co-op. And from what you're saying, there's an awesome uh, single-player experience. You've hit the nail on the head with all three things. That's what all games need. I agree. I will say these graphics look pretty damn good. I've never oh, even they're... watched one of the videos for this Ooh, game. They're amazing. I've never looked it up on YouTube. I know nothing about this game other than what people say. It is the old Western version of GTA. Yeah, and even better. <laughs> I even feel like it's even better. Like it's just it's beautiful, dude. It's well, a beautiful this is game. newer than GTA Five. Imagine what GTA Six would be if they would just come out with it. Yeah, I, and you know you always have speculation that they're working on. I think they're working on it, right? Oh, we all know they're working on it. It's just when are you going to do something with it? With it? When are you going to release to the public from Rockstar that GTA Six is coming? Because if it's not so. coming, if it's not coming, G- rocks are stupid. <laughs> now, my theory earlier where I just said, let's create GTA, where we refresh GTA 5, we keep everything GTA 5 has, and then we add to it, and we just call it GTA. That sounds like a badass decision. Like, can you imagine? And I know I just asked all these questions, but just imagine that. We don't got to ask it again. Refresh GTA with Red Dead Redemption 2 quality physics, graphics, everything. Okay. Imagine that game. 
I think it, it would be sick. Yeah, it would be one of the most amazing games that will last us another seven years. <laughs> <laughs> but with that said, what is your guys' feelings? Leave it in the comments down below, please. You know, let's uh, let's start engaging our community, guys. Let's start uh, saying hello to one another, being kind to one another, especially during these times. Um, yeah, it, it, you know, it was. I think we're gonna wrap it up for today. We've had some good conversation, and uh, I, I yeah, I, it, we'll leave you guys off on that note, okay? But with that said, it's always nice to uh, talk to you guys. And thanks for listening. We love you. Bye. Oh.